Hi everyone, let's talk about the Mobius inversion formula for arithmetic functions. So we're going to have a lot of definitions that we have to get through, but there's a very nice result at the end that relates us to summation functions. So first of all, an arithmetic function, let's define what that is. It's a function that goes from the positive integers into the complex numbers very general idea but we can actually say some pretty interesting stuff about it. Secondly, the Dirichlet convolution of an arithmetic function f is the following function, which is also an arithmetic function, it's f star g of n, because we're applying it to positive integers, is equal to the sum of fn, sorry, f, fd of n times g times n over d, and d goes d iterates over all positive divisors of n. And another way of writing this is the sum of fa times gb, where a and b are pairs of integers that multiply, pairs of positive integers that multiply to n. Something I should mention and that we're going to need is that the Dirichlet convolution is commutative and associative. Commutativity isn't hard to prove, but associativity does take some effort, and I'm not going to prove either in this video, I'm just going to be using them. Now, next comes the summation function. The summation function of f is f star 1, and f star 1 of n is if we compute it out using the Dirichlet convolution, we get that it is, and by one I mean the function that, that always equals to one. Um, we get that this is the sum of d over, d iterating over the positive divisors of n, f of d times one of n over d, which is equal to the sum d divides n of f of d, and we call this sf of n. So sf is the summation function of f. And we're going to have to define a couple more functions. The first one is the Mobius function. The Mobius function is, we call it mu, and mu is the function that satisfies that s of mu, the so summation function of mu is equal to epsilon, and I'm going to define epsilon. Epsilon is the identity for the Dirichlet convolution, so epsilon is defined as follows, epsilon epsilon of n is equal to 1 if n equals to 1 and 0 if n is not equal to 1 and it, it's a unique function that satisfies that f star epsilon is equal to f for any or arithmetic function f. So going back to the Mobius function, uh, Mobius function mu, it's a, it's a unique function that satisfies that S, the summation function of mu is equal to epsilon. And we can show that this is true if and only if mu of n is equal to negative one to the little omega of n, I'll define it in that, that moment, if n is square free and 0 if n is not square free. 
By square free, I mean that it's just a product of distinct primes, and square not square free means that it has a square factor, and those are those conditions are complements of each other. By omega of n, I mean the number of distinct prime factors of n. Okay, so that ends the definitions. Um, the things that we'll need, I'll, I'll summarize them right now. We need that s of mu is equal to s of mu is equal to epsilon. We're going to need that the Dirichlet convolution is commutative and associative. And that's it. We're going to use these three facts to prove the Mobius inversion formula. Which states that f is equal to mu star g if and only if g is equal to the summation function of f, which is f star 1. And we're going to prove this. So the first direction is suppose g is equal to the summation function of f, which is f star 1. Then we want to show this in that case. So let's start with the complicated side, mu star g. That's equal to mu star 1 star f by commutativity. Now by associativity, we get that this is equal to mu star 1 star f, and that's the summation function of mu star f, and that is equal to epsilon of f, and since epsilon is the identity, we get that this is just equal to f as desired. And secondly, in the, in the other direction, suppose f is equal to mu star g. In that case, we want to compute uh, the summation function of f. So, and we want to show that it's equal to g. So summation function of f is equal to 1 star f by commutativity. And that is equal to, we're going to substitute this in here. So we get 1 star mu star g. And we get 1 star mu star g. And 1 star mu, remember, is a summation function of mu. So we get a summation function of mu star g. And that's just epsilon of g since the summation function of mu is just epsilon. And that is just equal to g since epsilon is the identity. So we showed what we wanted to show. And that proves the Mobius inversion formula. See, the most um, useful case of this is that we can, we can go from If we know that f is equal to mu star g, we can we can find that g whatever g is is the summation function of f. So that allows us to compute the summation function of f. And in the other direction, if we know the summation function of f, we can recover f from it. And in some ways, that's even more important to be able to recover a function from its summation function. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.